Okay. Um, good morning to everybody. Um, my name is Dieter Wickert Ludemann. I'm the D in DK Conservators. Um, DK Conservators has been in existence for eight years. Um, this is our eighth year. We previously worked for Parliament for a number of years, and then we resigned and started our own company. And what we do um, at DK Conservators is the conservation of books, artworks on, on, on paper, any flat paper artifacts, maps, and um, posters and documents. Um, we also do um, conservation of photographic materials. Um, I, must, I must explain that a little bit more. Um, it's just the, the actual photograph, not the films. Um, we then also make um, archival enclosures for books and also for, um, for photographs and artworks. Um, we also um, run internship programs for people, young people that want to learn about conservation. At, the, at present, we have two interns. Um, we're a staff of, I think, nine, nine or ten people. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, that's, that's who we are, basically, and very briefly. Yeah, so, uh, so um, my name is Keith. Um, I'm Dieter's uh, business partner, as he said, he's the D, I'm the K. Um, and first of all, I think we need to say thank you to the Ludwig Museum as well um, for actually um, you know, inviting us to actually do this presentation for you. Um, we're obviously going to focus on, on a number of um, things, a number of aspects, especially sort of um, the maps that um, the Ludwig Museum kindly um, brought along so that we can actually just sort of talk um, about um, the condition and sort of proposed treatments that, um, you know, sort of we, we obviously deal on a daily basis. Um, and then obviously we'll go on to, on to books um, and then um, photographs um, as well. So what, we, what we're going to do now, I think, firstly, is um, we're obviously going to deframe um, one of the maps. Um, it's uh, obviously a map on Africa. Um, we're going to take the, take the map out of the, um, the frame and then obviously um, you know, discuss sort of um, what the, the present condition um, is. That's what sometimes helps if you have long fingernails. You can, you can just um, slip your nail and take the backing paper off. So as you can see, I think that um, the framing that was done, you know, many previous years obviously is, is totally different to the way the framing is obviously done now. And I think, you know, sort of um, way back then, the, the, the framing um, uh, conditions was totally different. They did not have, for argument's sake, the ideal um, materials available to actually kind of frame these maps the way they're supposed to be framed. So it is now taking off, you know, sort of um, materials that is basically sort of extremely acidic. Um, starting with obviously craft paper, which is obviously brown paper. And then you can see um, a lot of them have um, sort of backing boards. <coughs> and this backing board is obviously highly acidic. And I'm already seeing by removing um, sort of the brown paper, I'm already seeing sort of certain stains. So obviously, th and that is basically sort of tide marks. And obviously at some point, this, this map, um, there must have been some moisture um, um, or some dampness um, at some stage.
and the dampness um, can happen if, if a map or an artwork hangs on a damp wall um, because the, the dampness from the wall will um, affect the back of the artwork or the map. This is a highly acidic backing board. Um, and if you lift it up, you can see that the, the, the actual map, this is the back versa of the map. And this is heavy, heavy staining from acidic migration from the backing board. Um, the, the paper is generally discolored in addition to these severe stains, which could have been as a result of, of water um, migrate, migrating from a wall. You, you will also see sort of, um, um, sort of tapes as well, sort of old tapes. And these tapes were basically used, especially if you find them at the back of the, the, back of the maps, or for argument's sake, even in the artwork. Um, sometimes on the front you'll find them as well. Um, again, it's a case of um, what was used and what was available back then. And so obviously these tapes, these adhesive tapes that was used, was basically used for repair and repairs. So, so and, and over the time period, what will happen is this will, this will just slip off easily, but you will sit with tape res residue. And, and tape staining. Yes, and the problem for us is once that happens, it is extremely difficult to actually get the, the residue through the cleaning process um, um, out of this specific map. Not sure if I and obviously, you know, you sort of a lot of a lot a lot of times that you'll see a hinge, sort of running down the middle that actually joins the the, the two p the two parts. And, you know, I'm not a map specialist, um, but I can tell you that obviously, as you, as you might be aware, that maps usually generally come out of books. Um, so this map was initially folded and tipped into um, a book. Um, and obviously, they eventually took it out and wanted to frame um, um, this map. One of the things that I've also noticed is that Obviously, this map has no window mount or passepartout. So this map also, that's also a bad thing as well in one sense, where this map actually sit, sat or sit, is sitting directly against the glass. So hence the reason why you'll see this also kind of forming the stains. So there's no sort of separation. Um, um, and once we go into detail about this, uh, about the, the process of actually kind of um, uh, treating this map and preserving it, um, you'll see exactly what I mean. Okay. Yeah, um, positioning something, a work, a work on paper um, directly onto glass is, is dangerous because you can get condensation on the mm. forming on the glass and staining the, the artifact on paper. Do you want to move, move that frame? Yeah. Okay, let's speak about the color. So you can see on this map, I'm just going to lift it um, sort of slightly up. And um, 
you can see the colors in the map. So what and what has happened over time is that um, the colors obviously have slightly faded. Um, so it's it's sometimes it's difficult to um, you know know exactly you know what colors have been used um, because sometimes you just find sort of a dark line um, running sort of around the borders. So what we what we do when we when we are now at this at this stage and one of the things that we that we tend to do with maps and with artworks um, the way we actually treat um, artworks. Um, on paper and and maps is too, it's it's totally separate we, because we're dealing with with um, sort of old antique maps and there's a and you do not want to kind of change the look of the map um, that's that's important you know artworks you can change I mean you know if it's if it's a screen print <coughs> for argument's sake like this um, it might not be the best artwork but this artwork um, obviously um, is in a terrible condition. It, you can see the tide marks running there. All you can see, the yeah, there. Obviously, this work has gotten wet, and you can see there's there's creases and there's lots of tears. So this this artwork, for argument's sake, will definitely go through a chemical process. It will be treated with with um, 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 you know, sort of um, the ideal kind of um, um, chemicals that we need to use. But when it comes to when it comes to map, but before we get to that, um, a lot of a lots of times uh, maps are actually kind of adhered to backing boards, um, to acidic backing board. So and the, the process there is let me just put this map there and then I'll show you. I've got another map. And this one is badly discolored. Um, and it's also been laid down onto, a ba onto an acidic backing board, which you can see there. And to be able to treat this map, clean it to a certain extent, we don't want to make, a new, make it look new. Um, we need to take it off the backing board to treat the paper and what we'll we'll show you now is is we how we how we go about removing the the backing board so it's 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 a bit of a it's a bit of a process um it usually takes a couple of days to actually just remove this um acidic board um and one of you very careful but before we actually get to this part one of the things that we also do is that we obviously do condition reports um, for every single item, including photographs as well, because we need to know the condition of the of the um, of the um, artifact and also the proposed treatment. Um, and if it's on a backing board, so what we do is we're going to use a scalpel. And we will sit here. And we'll start peeling away the board layer by layer. And sometimes we find ourselves in a situation where, and this is a paper board, <coughs> we find ourselves in a situation where some maps or artifacts has been adhered to masonite board. And that becomes extremely difficult. And sometimes um, the museum or the institution or the gallery or the client um, will have to live with that. So the process is I will remove this sort of layer by layer until I get to sort of the last layer. And then what happens is then I will start using a, a bit of moisture or I'll, I will use uh, methyl cellulose to actually sort of remove the last layer 
of the acidic backing board. Now, one of the reasons why um, I, I mentioned the two options is, is if I'm using water, I know eventually I'm actually going to treat this map, wet treatment. If I'm using water to remove the last layer, I'm going to create um, tide marks. Um, hence the reason why I actually uh, also mentioned methyl cellulose, which is obviously not going to create any. Methyl cellulose is also a sizing for the paper itself but it will also make it easier for me to actually remove um, the acidic backing board um, much more easier as well without, you know, sort of creating any tide marks on the front. Because sometimes you find yourself in a position where you actually don't want to actually eventually treat the, the map. Um, so hence the reason why you use um, the methyl cellulose. Which is also used to dissolve the adhesive that is used to paste the map onto, onto the backing board. We try when, when, when um, we remove backing boards not to skin the back of the, of the, of the artwork or map. Um, because very often there's information written on the back of the map which we want to preserve. Yeah. So, so when, we, when we reach the stage, okay, this is my, my, my board removal. Now we've reached the stage where we've removed the backing board. So let's just say for argument's sake, this is now the board removal. So one of the things that we do as well, thanks, before we do any treatment as well, we obviously, um, we take detailed photographs also as well um, of, of um, the map or artifact. And then we also, at that stage, at this stage, before any wet, tre wet treatment, we now also have to um, check, uh, do tests on the pigments, because um, going forward, um, you know, sometimes, sometimes, you know, during the, the conservation um, sort of process, that um, we do sometimes, obviously, um, lose a little bit of color. So we obviously have to put that color back again. And hence the reason why we need to obviously um, document, you know, every single thing. So we do our tests of um, the pigment that has been used and also we need to do a pH test and test the, the pH of the paper because any treatment, even if it's aqueous treatment or non-aqueous treatment, um, you have to um, do the necessary and that's obviously check the pH of the paper. So whatever you eventually, whatever you take out, you have to put back in again. You've got to bring that pH to a certain level once again. So we're now at this stage where we've obviously sort of, um, the board has been removed and now we're obviously going to um, treat this map um, aqueously. So a bath will be prepared um, um, in our chemical room and we will just do um, a simple um, water wash um, on, this, on this map. It's usually, um, varies from client to client, um, but I know for argument's sake, if you look at museums um, and institutions, you know what I mean, we do not want the, the artifact um, over cleaned, hence the reason why I said we, let we only do water washing. And sometimes you'll be amazed um, that the staining, once after a couple of aqueous treatments, the staining will actually lighten. And sometimes you have to live sort of with um, severe staining. If, if, if for argument's sake, um, the map has to be chemically cleaned or this artwork has to be chemically cleaned, obviously it goes through a chemical process, we will definitely get rid of all the stains and all the foxing spots. Um, but that is a, that is that is um, a totally different sort of treatment um, um, that we kind of do, and we try not do it on maps, but definitely on on artworks. Before we do the wet treatment, 
we obviously first do dry surface cleaning, um, where we dry surface clean the front to, take to remove any surface dirt, front and back. And for that, we use draft clean powder, draft, yeah. which is a fine erasing powder, which we apply in circular motion over the map to get away any dirt that is on the map. And then obviously before any wet treatment again as well, because we've still got the tapes and the tape stains and tape adhesive. And here we use a specific solvent um, that is ideal for um, the paper and for the tape that is that needs to be removed. Um, once that has been computed, then we obviously sort of do a um, aqueous treatment. Um, and that would probably be three or four washes. Um, and the map is usually put on a support so that we are not handling the map with, with, with our hands because we don't want to damage this map even further because what usually happens is, is that sometimes, and I can see it with this map that we've, that we've done, is the paper itself will be extremely brittle. Hence the reason why we always use the flat paper objects um, on a support. The map goes through a um, aqueous treatment and once we're happy with the result um, and then obviously we will obviously focus on the repairs all the small little repairs and that we repair with and, um, and tears that have that have been caused i think this map for instance has has torn um along the along the fold if you look over here it's it's torn and the way we repair that is with thin strips of acid-free japanese tissue applied with a wheat starch paste or methyl cellulose, depending on the strength of the adhesive that is required. Um, and we treat that from the back. And, well, and then the, then the tear is repaired. Um, what, I, what, I, what, what, what I like to do as well with, with, with paper, because this paper has been, has been washed um, a number of times. So remember when, when, I mean, when you put a piece of paper in water um, you know, and you don't put back what has been taken out, the paper becomes weak. So what we do is, is, is before also we do the repairs after the water wash, we actually do a resizing bath. And the resizing bath is made up of methyl cellulose because we also got to raise the pH of the paper as well to a, um, an ideal level. A neutral level. A neutral level. So um, we obviously take the, 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 the map through this um, resizing process and um, it will obviously, it needs to air dry and it will dry, you know, sort of on its own. Um, and that will in one sense also strengthen the paper considerably. Um, yes. You know, it's because it's been through this water process um, and we need to obviously just, um, you know, kind of raise that pH level again. And, and um, I just want to chip in there. Um, after the water wash, we do a deacidification de de bath with another chemical mm -hmm. that um, will raise the pH to a level seven, which is neutral. Okay, and then, I and I think, I think once, once, the, once we're extremely happy with, with all the processes, once it's been repaired, it's then obviously sort of um, weighed down and flattened. Um, and then coming sort of, it's kind of the final step when um, you actually obviously going to probably put it back into the frame um, or if it's going to be, for argument's sake, if I remember um, correctly, the Rupert Museum, um, they have a, um, an extensive map collection as well. Um, and I know that a number of the maps is, is in frames, but not necessarily these frames are going to be actually kind of exhibited. So the ideal thing to do is probably, you know, store them sort of in a way that, um, you know, you can use them, but also store them sort of um, in a way, in, a, in an archival um, uh, support sleeve. 
where you can actually just put them in drawers, you know, and lay them flat, and then they should be absolutely fine. Because I think if you if you go the route of framing every single item, it just becomes costly. And I think by actually storing them in supported archival sleeves, um, which we also um, sort of do here right on the, yeah, uh, at the studio, is probably best for any institution using the correct materials. Um, and, and that is another way of actually story, um, storing them as well um, and you know, sort of minimizing the, 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 the space um, where these things are obviously stored. Um, so those are the options. And then, and then the final thing, I think, when you, if obviously when you're going to frame this map, I think you need to, when you speak to your framer, um, you know, you need to kind of specify, you need to ask for acid-free um, mount boards to be used. And when we talk about acid-free, um, the boards are made of cotton fiber. This, this backing board that was used um, to, to back th this particular map is made of wood fiber, which, which is acidic because it's in, in wood fiber there's a chemical called lignin. And that is, that is um, a chemical that breaks down the fibers and um, yeah, um, you're good. Yeah. So I think I think the most important thing is 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 when you speak to a framer, and especially um, if it's a if it's a rare, um, you know, sort of um, a map or um, you know or a um, an artwork, is is use the correct uh, I think materials. You know, pay a little bit extra. Um, I don't mind people putting, people say, but they, you know, their, their window mounts, we need to have color. But as long as the archival, the cotton rag board is sitting on the, directly on the work, and you can always put the color mount sort of on top of that, and then you are obviously sort of good to go. Bearing in mind that the window mount must be obviously sort of um, archival and the backing board is archival as well. If you live in, in and here's a, here's a tip when you're framing your works as well, if you're living in damp conditions, if you're living in, you know, sort of this constant, you know, it's a wet area. I think one of the things that when you frame your works, ask them to put between um, the backing board and the final board is to actually kind of put in a piece of mylar or a piece of plastic sheeting, because then obviously it prevents dampness from actually going through. And I'm always, I'm sure that you're aware, we're just going to finish off with this and then move on to the next. Um, I think when you're doing, Framing and when you're hanging um, your works on the wall, it's always a good for those wine drinkers. Um, have, uh, especially in the sun wash area, you know, have your little corks. You keep your wine corks, you cut them in half, and then what happens is that you can put the corks at the back of the frames, at the back of the frame, and that, in one sense, keeps it away from the wall, from the dampness. For instance, on, on this framed map, um, if no further treatment is necessary, um, you'd stick a cork, a half cork on each corner to separate it from the wall so that there's an air passage running behind the work and no dampness from the wall will, will come into contact, contact with, the, with the, the, the framed work. I think that's that's about it. What we want to mention about the the um, artifacts on paper or the maps and artworks. Um, and I think what we do now is is we um, move on. We'll, 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 we'll go into the the, the books. books. These books. Um, you probably all have heard about the, the terrible fire that happened at the Jagger Library at, the, at UCT. Um, the result of the fire was that the fire brigade came in with, with fire engines and water and um, they sprayed and most of the rare book collection of of UCT, of the Jagger Library, were housed in the basement levels. And um, when we volunteered with the salvage operation, 
we had to take these wet books out of the out of the dungeons or the, the basements, mm -hmm. I call them dungeons, um, and we then wrapped them in, in polythene um, and put them into cold storage to prevent any further damage from developing. Um, and then progressively we fetched books from the library because we were fortunate enough that the, the Jagger Library appointed us as the conservators for the, for the restoration of these rare books. And then we, as, as we've shown here, we fan them out on blotters um, and use dehumidifiers and, and, and um, wind tunnels if, if, if it's a large amount of um, books that we're treating. And that way, every day one has to check because you can see this page has actually stuck to the, stuck to the other page. You can see that, um, which can be, can be solved by carefully with using a spatula um, separating the paper. Um, until we get to have each page separated from the next. During the drying process, however, um, you, you get the added problem that mold, mold appears. Um, this is extensive mold buildup on, on the book. Um, and the mold obviously migrates right through the, through the book block. And the first step in our, in our conservation process of, of these books is to firstly dry them, and then secondly to demold them, where we use vacuum suction um, process using specialized vacuum um, small vacuum brushes that we that we attach to the vacuum um, suction action, um, and page by page, um, we remove any mold that is developed in the book. Um, this book here, you can see, which was also um, initially um, covered in mold, has been demolded. So. You, you see that the mold has been taken away. Um, we haven't even started um, on the restoration of these because the, the after, after they have been demolded, we will start on the actual restoration of the books. Um, and there you can see two of the rare books that have, ha have been where we've begun the restoration process. You can see that um, the spines of these books are severely damaged. Some of them are completely missing. Um, others are, the leather has, you can s see another shot of, of mold build up there. Um, some books still have the, have the leather spine, but the leather has, has um, torn, and um, that, that's something that during the restoration process we'll have to repair. <coughs> um, I, think, I, think, I think one of, one of the most important things that we um, you know, focus on um, when we're doing sort of um, uh, book conservation um, or restoration is to try and keep everything that is there. So, so it's not as if we're going to obviously um, sort of, um, you know, put new leather on um, or, um, you know, yeah. It, it, it's just a case of trying to preserve as much as possible of the original. Um, we will obviously kind of be doing sort of certain repairs because some of these mold stains on this leather binding for argument's sake can be, can be cleaned. So if we can, if we can save um, the leather, you know, and then 
um, what we'll do is obviously we, we will definitely you know, put a new piece of leather on, but we will keep the old leather and actually eventually um, sort of paste the, 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 the old leather back onto the, um, onto the binding. Um, sort of so nothing will change. Um, a lot of these books um, and these pages, as you can see, obviously um, will go through a specific treatment. Um, be it again aqueous treatment or non-aqueous treatment, but it has to be done um, because we've obviously, um, you know, killed off um, um, the mold, um, not necessarily these ones here, but the others. Um, so now the next step is obviously to kind of restore them as best as possible. Um, it's going to be a process. Um, and as Dieter said earlier, I mean, we were fortunate actually to, um, um, where UCT has chosen us as, as, as um, uh, you know, the company to actually kind of work on these books. Um, it, it, it is, we, we're also fortunate that we have a good team um, that is experienced in working with, with, with um, these bindings as well. But I can assure you that um, at the end of the day, once we actually kind of um, complete um, these books, a lot of them um, will be um, saved. Um, and, and again, everything will be um, sort of preserved as best as possible. We just thought we'd show you these books as well and, and show you, um, you know, what can happen in the case of even a, a flood in a museum, even in, in the case of a flood, even in your home. A lot of you have probably, you know, sort of um, home libraries. Um, but the, the best thing to do is also is, is you know, if it happens, you know, um, you know, contact one of us and we will sort of, you know, gladly kind of assist where we can in salvaging exactly what UCT did in salvaging um, um, these books. A lot of them have, unfortunately, it could not have been saved um, due to the fire as well. Um, but we're hoping that probably 90% of, of um, the rare books um, um, that we can um, actually save. I think, you know, that, that and, and um, I think if, if, I think this is more or less what we can say um, sort of about um, the books. And I think what we, what we now will obviously go on to is, is the, the photograph. And, the yeah. and this yeah. is Dieter's field. Dieter's, Dieter's the specialist in, pho in photography. I just want to, before we go into the photographic um, section of the of the um, mm. of the the, the presentation. Um, what we find also these books, the leather is extremely dry, mm. um, and it becomes it becomes brittle because it's it's a living. Leather is a living material, and um, should should be treated with a leather dressing on an annual basis or twice twice a year, mm -hmm. um, just to feed the leather, because as you can imagine, it's an animal skin and and that um, disintegrates over time. But what we what we try and do if we if we um, have to put new leather over the over the spine. We will use the original leather and paste that onto the new leather, so that the integrity of the book is not compromised. Mm. Okay, I'll show you now um, just just a brief um, or a small section of a of photographic conservation. Um, photographic conservation is is uh, does not involve chemicals because a photograph is a chemical composition as it is. So um, we can't use any chemicals on 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 photographs. Um, if there's staining on photographs, one has to live with them. Um, and um, what I'm going to show you now is how to make a a four flap folder for a photograph for storage. And um, what one should actually use is um, for, the for, for the folder is a, is a paper called Silver Safe. 
but that is it's a it's a specially formulated um, highly acid acid free paper with a smooth finish to the paper um, so that any friction doesn't damage the the emulsion of the of the photograph so over here we have a small photograph which we have conserved it's been it's been placed between acid free blotters um, as you can see it's it's been conserved it's been washed And um, now we will make a, a four-flap folder for, for this photograph so that it can be stored in your archive um, in an appropriate way. We have a, a sheet here of... We don't, we don't, we don't use as, um, silver safe paper because it is extremely expensive and... Um, difficult to come by in South Africa. In England, um, obviously, it's, it's available, but to import with the current exchange rate is very, very expensive. So what we've decided in our company, we will make use of um, acid-free paper, um, white paper, um, and then make these four fat folders. So, to begin with, you take the measurement of the, of the photograph. Um, Measure, um, you measure um, three times the width and three times the length of the photograph on the paper. Similarly, you do the same with the with, with the width of the of the photograph. We use a needle because we don't want pencil marks on the folder. Um, difficult um, if you if you just use a needle to remember where the where the mark is.
when when working with photographs one should be able one should be using latex gloves but there's a shortage of latex gloves in South Africa at the moment um, that we couldn't purchase more gloves. Right. <clears throat> you can see for a, for a small photograph like this, one needs quite a large piece of paper to make the full flap holder. Because what, we, what we're going to do is um, the, f the full flap holder will fold across the photograph on the, on the back and the front so that one doesn't get any pressure points on the emulsion. Um, so now I have to Can you get me a, a bone folder? Oh yes, that, that's fine. This is difficult. It's a very time consuming process. Um, do I have to measure this again?
part of um, the enclosure family. Um, when we spoke about earlier, when we spoke about the supported archival sleeves for artworks, and this is a way of actually storing um, one's um, photographs as well. Um, again, using obviously sort of um, the correct um, materials. Because also you've got to get these, these sleeves, um, these, sorry, f um, um, four flap folders correctly, um, the way you mark it as well. So that when the overlap happens, that there's no um, pressure points um, that is caused on the, um, on the front of the photograph. And we use the um, we use the Teflon folder um, or a bound folder. Um, the Teflon folder is just used so that because Teflon obviously doesn't burnish paper, so it's 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 obviously much better. Um, you can obviously make yours. We've imported ours, um, and it's just a matter of scoring um, for the folds instead of cutting. Um, we're now scoring with a Teflon folder. And then we do the same thing for the <coughs> for the width of the photograph. Yeah, so, so as when, while Deed is um, busy kind of marking out, um, I think one of the things that we focus on as well as a, um, as a conservation um, company um, or as a conservation team is, is preventative conservation. Because obviously one, when one sort of says conservation, that's obviously sort of minimum intervention in everything we do. Um, when it comes to restoration, um, that's obviously um, a little bit more than conservation. Um, so, and the, the same thing with, um, with, with photographs. Um, there's, there's not 
much that one can do um, when, a, when um, photographic material is basically damaged. Um, again, <coughs> the same, same procedure, um, and I'm just, um, I'm just kind of maybe speaking on behalf of Dieter as well, is that um, the same process of treatment for photographs is, is, is aqueous treatment. That's the only thing. We cannot use any chemicals um, on photographs. Um, I would not suggest that you try and um, use um, any chemicals or solvents on, on um, these photographs because um, obviously you will damage the um, emulsion. Um, and this is actually a very good way. Um, enclosures for, I think, for any artifact or object is, is such a necessity sometimes at this point. Um, we, uh, because it's a, it's a step, it's a first phase where we actually eventually actually get to the item um, to actually sort of um, restore it. Um, so, and while the, the photograph is obviously sort of um, in this um, specific enclosure that, um, that it's being made for, um, no harm um, can um, sort of come to this um, photograph. They, 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 are, they do take some time to obviously sort of make, um, and as far as I'm aware that um, some of the um, overseas um, conservation companies um, that sells these photographic materials, you can actually also purchase um, uh, these enclosures, but they do come at a cost, obviously. And it's such a nice, it's such a good way um, that um, you can actually just you know, sort of make it for your own collection as well, instead of um, you know sort of forking out a lot of money. And that goes that doesn't only go for 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 photographs; it goes for um, any enclosure, as a matter of fact, even if it's a book, um, or even um, documents can also um, sort of get um, enclosures as well. Um, Dieter is almost at the, the stage where he's going to obviously now do the the folding. So you cut out the four outer corners. As, as Dieter said when he started um, um, doing this, um, it's always a good idea as well um, to actually, and we apologize for that, um, where we actually have to kind of wear gloves. Um, we usually either wear the, the sort of the cotton gloves for certain um, objects, and then obviously um, the um, latex gloves for the photographs as well. So obviously because, the reason why is because you know one's fingerprints um, or any substance, substances on your on your hands will obviously get onto the photograph. Um, so just be aware of that. And we coming we're coming to the end now. One of, one of the things that we also kind of um, offer is that um, if a photograph is obviously sort of in a, in a bad condition, um, we do also um, sort of um, digital restoration as well. Um, that's just another aspect of um, the, business as the business side. There we go.
and what we do is um, we put the photograph back onto the onto the paper and then in a clockwise um, manner you fold this over so there's ample there's ample um, protection of the of the fold of the of the emulsion of the photograph Protected, and that's, that's and, and then, um, if you want to catalog your photographs, you can you can yeah. stick your um, numbers and accession numbers and other details. Um, maybe the photographer's name um, onto the onto the top flap, which won't have any effect on the emulsion. So that is that is um, basically how you make a four flap folder for for a photograph. Cool. We, we just uh, um, we we just uh, that's that's basically sort of um, the end, and we just want to um, just by end off by saying you know sort of thank um, you know thank you to to Tatumana and the crew that. Um, um, had a lot of patience with us, yeah, and, and also and especially also to the Rupert, Rupert Museum, Museum um, um, for, for hosting, for um, enabling us to to do this live streaming. Yeah, um, thank you very much indeed. And if there's any any um, um, further information that you need, um, you, you know where to get hold of us. Um, thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs>